Welcome back with, you've got Nate and Sujin here um, with Inbox Attack and Mailshake. We're gonna walk through setting up your DNS record so you have the best deliverability. This is part two of a three-part video on deliverability, getting your email in the inbox. Nate, all you here, this is way more technical than I know about, and uh, Nate will do an <laughs> awesome job just explaining it. All right, thanks Sujin. In the previous video, we looked at a general overview of how emails go step by step by step by step through a process to go from you hit and send to someone's actual inbox. The first obstacle to that is the DNS records. So we're gonna start with the first one. SPF records. SPF records are what controls this mailed by line in an email. This email was an email I sent uh, via MailChimp. And you'll notice that that mcsv.net does not match inboxattack.com. One of the benefits of MailShake is it allows you to update the SPF record so it matches. So if you're going after corporate clients, you want those records to match. Now, typically people have more than one email service they use. They may use SendGrid for receipts, they may use MailShake for cold email, they may use MailChimp for newsletters. And what happens is people, when the, what you're looking at here is a screenshot from Cloudflare. It's a DNS record manager that I use that is free and I love it. Uh, it looks very similar in GoDaddy, wherever your DNS records live. Sometimes that's your web host and sometimes that is where you purchased your domain originally. The biggest thing that you need to remember when you're updating your SPF record. So with MailShake, most people need Google for that. They're going to they're gonna have a G Suite account. So that underscore SPF.google.com section needs to be in there. This is a flattened record. You should not have multiple SPF records. And if you've been in business for any length of time, if you log into your account, you'll likely see a bunch of SPF records. You just merge them together. So this is an example of a merge or a flattened SPF record. And this one here is one of mine. It's got Google to cover my G Suite stuff, which covers MailShake. It's got MailChimp's SPF record in there and SendGrids, which is how I send my receipts and my, uh, my order confirmations, things like that. So that's the, fir the first challenge. Second challenge is DKIM, Domain Keys Identified Mail. That is, that's the secret password that says that, all right, Nate and inboxattack.com sent me this email and it was signed with his signature at inboxattack.com. When, once again, when those don't match or they're missing, it can block you at the server level. You won't even have a chance of getting into a spam filter. So that's something that you could do. Now, because MailShake, lives on top of G Suite, I thought it might be a good idea to show you where to get your actual DKIM record. So real quickly, you'll log into your G Suite account at admin.google.com, click on apps, click on G Suite, click on Gmail, and you scroll down a little bit and there'll be an authenticate email section. In there, there's, there's a button that'll say generate a record for your domain, and it'll spit out a record name, which is usually goes on the left side when you're updating your records and the actual record value, which will say DKIM, RSA is just a, a type of key. It's a security thing and a really, really long chunk of garbage gook. And that all that needs to be done is copy, paste it and save. When that's done, you hit authenticate and sometimes it takes a day or two, but once that's done, now you have a proper DKIM record and your deliverability will absolutely get better. So this is what, what it would look like in, in Cloudflare and frankly, most other uh, hosts and domain managers. The issue when you have multiple email platforms is that every single email platform is gonna need its own SPF record, its own DKIM record. SPF records need to be flattened. DKIM records, you could have separate ones. In this case, you'll see that instead of a text record, MailChimp had me do a, a C name record, uh, which is just, just a different kind of record, right? And as I said, with all of this stuff, it is copy and paste. If you have access to all the platforms and have the, the records ready, a lot of that, you could just Google it. You can Google G Suite SPF records. Once that's done, it's just 
copy and paste. It's one and done. Once you set it up, you will never have to touch it again. All right, DMARC. This one is becoming a bigger deal. You do not need to have a DMARC record to send emails, but if you're going after bigger clients that have bigger email servers, you need it. Instead of having to deal with all the nerdiness of a DMARC record, there's a lot of free account platforms. I use one called DMARCian. And you'll see once again, it generates, it generates a record. What DMARC is, is it's like your passport. It says, hey, this person's SPF record, good to go. It matches this person's DKIM record, it looks good. This person looks legit. DMARC is like getting your passport to be able to travel around the world. It's your, it's your traveler's visa. Technically, all it does is keeps your email from getting spoofed. So if someone is trying to send emails as you but isn't you, this will let you know. But it's, it's having that stamp. It's like the highest level of identification you could have. Once again, this is free and it's one and done. You set it up once, you don't touch it again. One of the things that you'll notice with DMARC is it'll allow you to troubleshoot sending problems. This is from my account. And you'll see that I have a SPF issue, a send grid on some of my transactional emails, which is likely generated by maybe a plugin or something. So that's just a way for you to troubleshoot issues. When you get into that arena, it's best just to hire someone. You could call us, we could help you out with it. And there's uh, most good web, web developers will know how to navigate this, uh, this stuff as well. All right, guys, that's it. Subscribe and comment if you have any questions. Nate and I are really, really active in answering questions here on the YouTube comments. Um, so definitely do that if you have any questions. And stay tuned for our next few videos. We're going to talk more about deliverability, getting in that inbox. Again, Nate has talked about some very technical stuff that, you know, sounds daunting, but if you just follow the steps as you, as Nate kind of walks you in that, in this video, it's fairly straightforward. I actually was doing this. That's why I was on mute um, while he was doing this and uh, walking through this. And I set it up within the time of this video. So very, very easy. All right. Until next time.